Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's Ike from Flipside Mu Music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flipside Music. Welcome to uh, Season 2, Episode 33 of the weekly question and answer show that nobody watches. <laughs> uh, you ask us a question, we give you an answer. That's it. So, yeah, we don't have a ton on the, yeah. ton this week, so this will be a pretty short, quick episode. Oh, I can hear the cheers. Hear yeah. the cheers <laughs> We're also here. trying a new mic, so if you hear other things in the environment, too bad. Yeah, if you hear rustling and such. Yeah, and beeping and phones and whatever else happens to us. In the I'll next try to minutes. take that out and post. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> and we actually say it around here a lot. Now. I'll just take it out and post. Yeah. You know. Well, we've been doing a lot more videos. I hope you guys are enjoying that stuff. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump into the questions. Number one question comes from our friend Ryan Lawley down at RNA Music, your uh, guitar lesson and friendly you know, neighborhood Texas guitar store. Yeah, deep yeah. in the heart of Texas. Yeah. Uh, all that good stuff. So, where even yeah. the buildings have mustaches. Right, even the buildings <laughs> have beards. Yeah, exactly. All right, so Ryan asks us what's your favorite guitar that is not a Tele? Clearly, Ryan knows that I love Telecasters. Right. So, what is the other guitar that I like? Yeah, is this like, bot, I guess, body style, maybe? Well, yeah. Scooty's sort of getting that. Um, or if it's a particular one. Or is it, one. like, brand? That, yeah, that too. No, well, I would say body style. Probably, yeah. I'm going with. You know what? I really like... Um, it's hard to, to, to pick that and choose. I'm not really a single cut kind of person. But I do like the, you know, like the... The Reverend, yeah, double agent style, or the you know the the yeah the double agents are pretty awesome. Well, I think you like the sound. I mean, you don't play them as often, but I think you like the sound of a single cut, especially like when you yeah you're more in the Billy Gibbons vein of things. Yeah, that's true. I like the yeah. sound, but it, I'm not like a Les Paul. Yes, I'm right. not a big Les Paul guy. Not that they're not awesome. I just I've never they just never did it for me. Right. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Strats are good. Yeah. Well, for me, I'm, I'm sure. I guess if he was going to phrase this question for me, it would well, be that's already, that's not an explorer. Right. Whatever's not yeah. an explorer. Um. Or... I don't know. Lately, it's been. I mean, honestly, it's weird because it's like I feel like I, I used to try to stay away from strats when I was first starting. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but like more and more of the players that I like. So I guess strats is because you can do so many things. They're, they're whatever you need them to be. Like yeah. super strats, especially with super strats. I mean. They can do anything you need them to. So, you just I mean, that was a, kind I of like a boring the... answer, I guess. But it's like explorers are my favorite, so that one's already pretty interesting. And I love tellies in all forms. Yeah, tele well, yeah, regular, yeah. tele deluxe, tele with humbuckers, tele, tele thin line, tele custom, yeah. all that shit. I love all of them. I, I think I'm gonna just try to build one of each, or at least acquire one of each type of tele. Like have Should a regular tele. tele base too at some point. I could I could work that yeah. out. So. That's what I'm saying. All right. All right. Uh, ben Coombs asks, which smaller pedal company do you think is going to blow up and be the bigger player in 2021? Well, that's a good question. I don't know if he's hinting at something. I don't know but... if he's hinting at something either, but that's kind of where I'm going. Yeah, because I was going to say that's the like LPD, uh, like yeah. Lawrence Petro. That's probably the one I feel like I'm seeing the most buzz and most interest on and suddenly. Because I felt like, yeah. like he was definitely out in the mix, but since he's been doing this rebranding, which the new pedals look pretty great, by look the way. Look great, yeah. Um, but yeah, since he's been kind of doing that, and then Ben has his own signature drive now. Yep. So I feel like there's yeah, a lot more <laughs> buzz around LPD right now, which is really cool to see. Because I've been seeing like RJ Ronquilio and Rhett Scholl and some of those other YouTube guys start using his pedals in their demos and stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, the 74 is a great pedal. The 87 yeah. is a great pedal. Yeah. So I would say, I mean, is it going to be... Uh, is he going to blow up and be a bigger player? I think he'll, I think he'll I be think big for boutique. Some, yeah, he'll yeah. be. He, I, or he I has think chances. He, of, yeah, yeah, he's going to grow more this year. Yeah, you know, twenty twenty one for sure. I think he'll he'll definitely get more popular. Now, how big he gets is up to well, him. Well, yeah. What's the because that's the thing? Like people ask us, what's the definition of boutique these days? And that's the other thing is like I don't well, know. Yeah, because it's like at this point. Cause... Yeah, because it's like outside of here. Like yeah, we have a ton of pedal companies, but if you go to other states or other places, that's not usually the th case. And so to me, 
like in, at least in my previous experience, boutique was like things that were not like electro harmonics, MXR, you know, Dunlop, even right. uh, you know any of the like those bigger Brent Boss, like any yeah. of the brands that had been around kind of forever and were also owned by bigger parent companies or anything like that. So to me, like, because like JHS, I feel like is pretty huge, and it's like arguably maybe not boutique anymore. But at right. the same they're, time, they're considered they're, right. We, yeah, they're not every. About yeah, because they're not everywhere. So like, it, right. yeah, and I feel like LPD. It's like it kind of depends because I don't know. I don't know if he has a team. I don't think he. I haven't really talked to him a lot yet, so I don't know if he has a, a you know a full team going or anything, or if it's still just him. But it's like in either case, I feel like he could be big for boutique. Um, right. I yeah. think yes. It's going to be like how big is boutique or how small is boutique is really right. was what's going to come down. I think that's right. going to be more the question. Yeah, because I don't like, think Lawrence, which he probably out. doesn't aspire to be the, the, like the next boss and having a full like that's yeah, that's too. I mean, maybe he does, but like that would be uh, that'd be a, I feel like a crazy amount of growth. But I feel like just overall, I'm definitely seeing his stuff more in more places. Right. So, and I think you can make a decent living, and you could probably do really well as right. stay in being a smaller you know, builder because yeah. I mean, what is boutique is earthquake are still boutique is Walrus right. still boutique. Well, yeah. Cause some you people know, argue that boutique is only like the guys that are single builders. Like, yeah. Are we getting that? Yeah. Are like we getting, like, are we getting to that? Like, right. Oh, if it has more than two people, it's not yeah. boutique. Yeah. It has to be made by a forged right. by a single yeah. artisan. Right. Yeah. This is forged from one piece of metal. <laughs> but made yeah. Into the knobs. <laughs> and we used the, Magical tree of mystery to make the knobs. Whatever bullshit. Yeah. They want. The bake light tree of knobs. Right. <laughs> the old bake light tree of knobs. So um, I would say though Lawrence looks like he's poised to kind of to, to do some serious growth this year. Yeah. Um I mean there's other companies out there too that are doing some cool stuff. KSR with their mm -hmm. preamps are there. I mean, Fuzz Lord is doing some cool things. Yeah, yeah I'm um, seeing him. You're know, seeing him kind of grow up. Well, and yeah, grow, he, grow a bit. Well, yeah, because if I understand correctly, even he was surprised at kind of how things have been moving lately. Because it seems like all of a sudden, you know, he was doing batches of, you know, probably 15 to 30 at one point. Now he's doing like 150. So it's right. like it's pretty pretty huge numbers compared to what he was doing. So it's yeah. cool to see some of these smaller. I think with YouTube especially. These smaller guys have a lot more of a fighting chance of actually getting out there now. Yeah, yeah. I think that, well, you can spread the word. I mean, even right. like VS Audio, which is a small company out of uh, out of Greece, right. you know, we've done pretty well with them. We're only, I don't know if we're still the only dealer in the U.S., but we're one, one of a few. handful, yeah. and they've done pretty well, you know what I mean? And it's, so we might see those guys grow yeah. more this year, too, because <clears throat> like that aftermath is a killer pedal. Right. You know, yeah. And some of the other ones are really cool too. So, yeah, like yeah. I think the alchemy, it's it's very different. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people, like it's you know half one half chorus, one half delay. It's pretty pretty interesting stuff. So, well, and like honestly, they're switching system, and that's something I don't feel like a ton of people talk about. If you own more than one of their pedals, and you save presets on them, when you switch one preset to one, you can actually sync it with another one. And it's like we I think do, that's a pretty interesting. We should do a video on that. Yeah. Cause like that's a pretty Just interesting show, concept of, you know, of having like more than one pedal from a company. You hook it up with a TRS cable, and all of a sudden you can make them both switch at the same time. Yeah, we should do a video on those. We yeah. should pull all their stuff together and, and go through them. So yeah, maybe we'll do that. That's a, we'll put that on the list. All right, next. All right, Janice Lala. Um, how about some commentary on drum machines and pedals? I don't know if I have a ton to offer here. Um, I mean, I haven't tried like a ton. I know like the new the RC10, you know, from Boss in terms of like a looper and drum machine. And drum machine. That one's been pretty solid. Um, I mean, honestly, like Superior Drummer, I haven't messed with that a lot, but Nico had been letting me try that. And that to me, in terms of like, I guess you could call it a drum machine. You're really like weaving little bits and pieces of things together to make like a drum track. But like to me so far, that's been the most convincing thing. Cause but that's within your audio interface right i mean that's within record like reaper or something right well yeah essentially you set up superior drummer and then you port each one of like the drums you would match it to like a track so it's almost like if you had a microphone on each one of those drums mm -hmm. and then you port that over to reaper and this is what i'm like trying to learn right now so that i can start adding drum tracks but essentially you can take like you know an intro a chorus you know and a fill and you can kind of weave them together and it'll play it on a loop for you 
yeah. then you can just record that and play along to it. But it's like it's it's pretty amazing, like the different because they like bleed over from the mics or you know at least yeah. What would you would have like in right. the studio type right? And so like so far to me, if you're gonna go for like something to play along with and you could play with, you know with your computer there, I would definitely consider Superior Drummer. But that's the only one I feel like I even have any input on because uh, that was that's kind of where I was gonna go. Like as far as I've tried Beat Buddy, right. I've tried, what was the other one? The SRDM or something. I think we got to be used one over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the, there was another one. There's another something that we had that was a, that was a drum machine. Like a pedal version. Pedal drum, drum machine. machine, yeah. And, and I think it's cool to a certain degree, but I don't think you have as much control over it as you'd like. And then I think it does, when you're feeding it through with other pedals, you have other issues that yeah. start to happen. And that kind of sucks. Yeah. So my thought is, is if you can learn and work with like, you know, download Reaper, it's free. Right. Get that and then spend the money to get a superior drummer or easy drummer or something like that. Right. And then you could, you could create whatever you want specifically, right. not what's in a pedal that's telling you what to do. And right. then you could just create your whole song. So let's say you have a riff mm -hmm. and then you could put a drum, you could put a drum track behind it and then that riff could turn into, you know, well, yeah, like, that's a core, that's a part that's a chorus or that's part of right you know, i could use this for a verse and then you put all that together with all the drum stuff right and you know what now you're recording tunes right so that, i don't know that's the way i would go with it yeah and like even if you wanted like if i guess if the idea or the if what the ultimate goal is to get to where you could sort of rehearse with it then what i would probably end up doing is just have like a you know a small self-powered pa mm -hmm. hook that up to your computer in terms of your you know that would be your sound that you're running out and then set up all your drum tracks either on the computer or something that you could record into, you know, and send it out to that. Because then you could get it loud enough that you could actually rehearse to it as well. Right. If that's kind of the ultimate goal. Because I think most people think, like, with pedals, I guess I feel like that would be the goal is to be able to at least Perform. really rehearse with it. And, yeah. Well, maybe what you could do, though, is if you put the track together on Superior Drum Art or through Reaper and right. then, then maybe have a drum pedal that you could turn on that you could put that into. Yeah, because actually I've be seen people take like any of the loopers that have the SD card function. Mm -hmm. I've also seen people take it to where they'll load up like a few tracks on that and then put that in the looper and then use the looper essentially as the playback device so that it's still going out. Right. So like that would be yeah, you another option. You could put option. that probably through the effects loop. Yeah, you could so, probably, yeah, usually with those loopers you'd have a stereo out so you could even just send that right out to the house or whatever you needed yeah. to do. So there, there's, there's, I think there's some... There's a few ways to skin that cat. Yeah, yeah. it just yeah. kind of depends on what your ultimate goal is. Is, is right. it for a live performance thing or is it for a home thing? I right. think you could. I think there's a hybrid of both. Yeah, if it's just together. for writing, I would definitely I'm in a weird, go. I'm in a weird spot yeah. of that too because I'm like, I want to do this, but I kind of want to be able to do that right. as well. So I'm trying to put together as like an acoustic thing. So I'm kind of in this very similar uh, situation. But yeah. That's how I would go about it. Yeah, I think those are... You know, especially if it's a writing tool, then I would definitely look at Superior Drummer because that one has a lot of flexibility and it's not incredibly difficult to use. So, yeah, and get Reaper. Yeah, Reaper's in terms of your recording, a, uh, yeah. free download. Yeah, and a lot of people use it with a lot of great functionality, and it could be free. You could pay for it too. Um, yeah, if you want to support them, you can. You can, but it's one of those things like if you want to dip your toes into recording, it's a it's a really great workstation for that. So, yeah, and it's basically. I mean, sixty. It's like sixty bucks, right? Right. For a whole the, recording yeah. thing, it's worth it. Yeah. So. No, Reefer, Reefer is amazing. Reefer is amazing. Reefer's like, yeah. <laughs> Reefer's pretty amazing too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know where heads at? Heads at. <laughs> I see what's up. Um, P. Fritz. Did we figure out this is Patrick? Yeah, that's Patrick. Okay. So he wanted further discussion on parallel pedas, which is what we pedas. Yeah, it was our slip oh, we up already, last week. Oh, we already we already fixed them up. He already came in and bought some shit. Well, yeah, but I mean, in terms like, there was actually he's a few already, people that were asking about, oh, yeah, like, like, he already got yeah, it. Like, what he's would already, the application be? But yeah, now the, to me, like, at least the way I use Parallel the most is especially, like, with modulation. Because, like, to me, like, when you feed a phaser into a delay, the delay is then dealing with that washy phaser right. signal. And then if you reverse it, if you send the delay into the phaser, then the phaser is dealing with, like, all these fragmented things rather than mm -hmm. giving you that nice 
kind of sustained guy. swirl. Yeah. So to me, if you can run them in parallel, you get the swirl and you get the delay without them like conflicting. So to me, like that's so you have, the the main. You, you have two functions happening at the same time that are not impeded by the other. Right. It's just yeah, they're running together without running into each other. So to me, it it, it adds like a shit ton of clarity back into things. See, and the way I would look at it, and the way I would probably use it, is ha- is to have it set up as two different, two or three different tonalities. Well, I'll just say that's the so other application. I to, I, yeah. Yeah. If I wanted to do, let's say, hey, I really want a, um, a Steve Barry Vaughn vibe. Mm-hmm. So that could be one. And then let's say I wanted something that was going to be more uh, ambient, let's just say. Mm-hmm. Or I want to go, let's say, for a John Mayer type thing. That's yeah, like I have kind of two tones running, at a, or yeah. two drive sections even running at the same time. Right, and then let's say yeah. I wanted to go something that's heavier, like, hey, I want something that's got some really heavy overdrive, a right. little bit of compression, something that's going to get that singing kind right. of feel to it. And so I can kind of set it up that way, where there's like three different tonalities, depending on the songs you're using, instead right. of just dancing around and turning on and off, you could almost have it so that... You know that that does exactly the thing I want. It's not just close enough. You see what yes, I'm saying? Yeah. And then it's, I think it's a lot less dancing. It's mm-hmm. like there we go. I'm I'm going this way. I'm good. yeah, yeah. No, and I even uh, to me like another application, or at least I feel like one that at least seems to help other people. Like because I used to struggle with fuzz until I finally found one that really worked for me. Um, but I used to, or I used to feel like I didn't always like the response of fuzz, and I think that's something that a lot of people have issues with. Is like each each fuzz feels drastically different than like mm-hmm. a straight up distortion. So like for me, like I love the Rev G4, and I also love fuzz. So together, you can get like the woof and all that low end growl kind of churning sound of the fuzz, but you can get the response of the distortion running them at the same time without having to run them into each other. So again, you still get the clarity that I was kind of talking about, but you get two flavors. So it's almost like the people that need the response of a distortion, but want the sound of a fuzz, Mm -hmm. you can kind of blend and hybridize the two. Yeah. See, that's kind of a cool option too. So yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Like the tri-parallel mixer is a good one. Yeah. It's a good starting spot. Yeah. Swiss Things is a little bit more... Complete. And then, yeah, the, the Boss ES series also has mixers in it so that you're able to do that. So that's another one that you can um, you can do basically two mixers so you can run two parallel chains with that one. And then I think uh, Signal, right? Old Blood Noise, is that who does that? Oh, the Signal Blender? Yes. yes. Yeah. So that's another... Yep. Those are some options out there if you're yeah, wanting if you want, to go yeah. down that rabbit hole and find out what that is. And it all depends there again on how much you're looking to do. Yeah. You know, and how yeah. different your from song to song is going to be or you know right, or, yeah, performing like, out and how all you're doing. All right. that stuff's happening. Cuz you can even section things off as a loop, but then if you're blending the loops is where the fun kind of comes into it. Um, fun with loops. Yeah. Yeah, there's another video series maybe. Yeah. Fun with loops. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll enter a parallel we'll universe it, and we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. put it on the uh, we'll put it on the list of shite to do. Right. So. The shite list. <laughs> all right i think that's about it right yep that was pretty much it for this one all right well that's it for the that's it for this episode please if you guys are still here uh hit the like button subscribe if you're new and you lasted this long i appreciate it good on you if you're glutton for punishment <laughs> hit the little bell the ding ding ling ling and let you um let Get yourself notifications. know oh. that you're getting notifications from us yes that made no sense no it sort of did like it'll the bell, when it's illuminated, will let you know that you will when now you, get notifications. When you shake a five, <laughs> yeah. you gotta shake a five that bell to know what's up. Exactly. That's it. All right, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. You're on the Dr. Phil show. It's up to you. I was trying to do a crop list. You got a wee wallop <laughs> around the floor. Ain't that a guy? You're not plugged in. You're married. Oh, shit. Let's, let's room, just do this. There. Ow. What the hell are you thinking?